Hello and welcome. I am in the Virginia Harrison Parlor in Lathrop Hall, University of Wisconsin Dance Department, and I'm sitting today with guest artist Natalie Desch, assistant professor at the University of Utah Dance Department and former dancer with the Jose Limon Dance Company. Today we are talking modern dance, and I'd like to welcome Natalie to help us, to give us an entry point into this wonderful art form. Natalie, welcome. Thank you so much, Chris. I, I love that you're doing this, <laughs> and I appreciate being here with you. First, tell us a little bit about yourself. I started dance quite uh, as, a, as a young person. Um, dancing in a kind of a studio setting that had a variety of different offerings. Um, loved it all mm. and was just smitten by the dance bug as so many of us are um, from an early age. Found my way to the Juilliard School when I was um, uh, graduating from high school uh, and that was an outstanding experience. I lived in such a, a, um, a small community in western Pennsylvania, New, Newcastle, Pennsylvania, um, that, that modern dance had somehow not made its way there. Huh. And so, so Juilliard was the first time that I experienced these, um, these kind of icons of the 20th century um, in modern dance. And um, I, was, I was smitten right away. So let's, let's, let's yes. stick a pin right there sure, sure. And, and use this as an opportunity to talk about what this different thing yes. is that you are experiencing. But firstly, what was the mm -hmm. dance that you were practicing? Um, right. Was that ballet? Right. I mean, I started out, as many young people do, in a, a casual setting, right. like an hour of tap, an hour of jazz, an hour of ballet. Right. But um, the, the, the person who I worked with, she was drawn to the rigors of a classical ballet um, technique um, kind of pedagogy. And so that became, as I, I uh, my high school career, Sure. Further, it, it became like kind of the focus, yeah. and and I loved all kinds of dances, but this the training, the right? training, the primary training was 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 it, centered around exactly. classical ballet. It ramped up, and so you arrive at Juilliard, mm -hmm. and you come across this thing called modern dance. Oh, Let's use this opportunity now to talk about what. Yeah. Is my, before definition, what was so different? Well, at first, I must say, I was a little thrown. I was mm. a little thrown with the, the sense of freedom mm. that I experienced. I, I, I didn't quite, I think because um, ballet had given such structure, and um, in, in a traditional sense, it has a lot of rigor, but it has a lot of rules. Right. And then and that's, that's... And if you follow the rules, you'll be fine. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> so when, when you, you are, are, are maybe um, going through that kind of mentality mm -hmm. to have this new philosophy or this new way of thinking come at you as a student, as yes, a student, yes. um, it, was, it was a little perplexing, but then fairly soon after being, having that introduction, I just, I felt this my heart oh. kind of moved towards it. And, yeah. and um, so that, it felt very, um, it felt very right to come into my modern classes, to, to be working sometimes a little bit more like on the ground. That mm -hmm. was a whole new thing for me, mm -hmm. you know, to, to not always be trying to escape gravity, but mm -hmm. actually to be working with it. Um, and then just to be working in with, in my, physically in a, in a, in a very, very new and different way. Right. Things that you know m might have been codified, like Graham. Um, things that weren't so codified, like Limon. But but things that um, just had a completely different sensibility to them, um, and a groundedness and a weightedness mm -hmm. that I was not really ever considering before this time. So it was it was extremely eye opening, but also extremely like. Um, heart opening, right. I, I would say. How would you at that time mm -hmm. define modern dance or the modern dance experience you were having? Yeah, I mean, it's very interesting because it still had um, ties to what you might think of as moving into a classroom. You move in a cl into a classroom and there are, um, there are combinations, there mm -hmm. are things that you're doing that have some... Structure. Structure, yeah, mm -hmm. there's mm -hmm. structures that I, yes. I relate or I understood and um, had there was kind of some carryover, but I think that um, I think that the expressions and the 
th the potentials for emotions, perhaps, like the, the freedom to bring yourself mm -hmm. into something was something, or at least I, I, that's kind of what I remember. I remember being feeling very expressive mm -hmm. in a whole new way that I, I just hadn't perhaps. Maybe, maybe in my ballet performing as a character, you know, right. embodying a character, that there was of course expression. There's right, always right, expression right, whenever you move. There's right. always expression. But I, I feel like it was m more personal. It was mm. my, um, my saying something through my movement um, that was really refreshing. I think it was really something interesting and and also the i mean the modern modern dance it just it it posed a lot of new rules for my body mm. like different again just different ways of moving um that i was just not i had never yeah. experienced or, or thought of so again like this door was just like the first step mm -hmm. into what would become then like finding my own voice eventually or, or like continuing to find yeah. my own voice yeah. not just the voice of grams or limones or, or you know like but right. that, that started me to see that, oh, these were people that had wanted to find their own expression. Their Those, own that, that, that is an elemental concept of modern dance, yeah. right? Yes. The individual's ability yes. to find their voice and make their own pathway. Yeah. And a modern dance technique may give you some tools right, right. with which to begin right. to experience that safely. Right, right. exactly. But exactly. the end will, should really be how you discover your voice and what you can do exactly. with it. Exactly, yeah. and that, I mean, that's the beauty, is that yes, that, yes. That, that can be a tool building kind of activity, but then I, I feel like what has been beautiful since that time, and, and again, that's what I say, the door open, mm -hmm. the door opens to like worlds upon worlds yes. of not just one person's vision, but your own vision, or yes. allowing other people to have their own visions. Yes. So, I mean, yes. to me, that is just like, yeah. it's just a beautiful uh, idea. Great, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Um, who is Jose Limon? Mm -hmm. And um, what is the sort of, yeah, who, let's start with who sure. is Jose Limon? Sure, yeah. so Jose, Jose yeah. Limon um, is a, Mex a Mexican-American choreographer born in Culiacan, Mexico in 1908, um, moved, uh, li lived in a world of war, um, at that time civil war in Mexico, moved with his family at a very young age to California, um, and uh, grew up as, as many people, his family figuring out how to be somewhat, somewhat uh, refugees, mm. you know, moving to a better place, a safer mm -hmm. place, um, and, and learning how to kind of uh, ex exist in a, a new culture, in a new, a new country, um, with all kinds of rules changing. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, he grew up as a, um, a younger person, as a visual artist first. Mm. So he's very interested in expressing, creating, but on the canvas. Yes. And I think that's really yeah. interesting to see mm. that, like, you know, from, a, from a, uh, a young time in his life, he really, he wanted to say something. He was excited about making art. Right. But he, um, he later, later on, in, as a, a, a very young adult, um, finally found movement. He found dance. Mm -hmm. And um, that was... That was, again, like, like for me a little bit too, like a door opening into a, a, a different landscape. Mm -hmm. And so he, um, as, as, as some people do, they, they just, they, they find something, maybe not as a young person, but a little bit later, and they run with it. And they find um, that those passions just leading them. And so um, he primarily at, uh, at, a, at that early stage in his dance career um, studied with Doris Humphrey, mm -hmm. who is one of those um, modern dance pioneers that we, we think of, and um, Charles Weidman, who was her partner. And um, he, I think, just was gobbling up all this information and these experiences and, and the ideas that Doris was researching about. And, um, and I think that had such an indelible um, print on on who he was as an artist, mm -hmm. of course. Um, but then he had 
um, and we'll see through the canon of his work, he had so much that he was drawing from just as a human being, right. as a human being, right. first and foremost. In terms of that lineage, let me ask, yes. um, mm -hmm. in terms of the Humphrey lineage, what were some of those ideas, movement yes. ideas that oh. Humphrey was working on that Limon continued to advance? Just, just so, so interesting, so interesting. So, so Doris Humphrey was, um, I, I really think of her as like this, um, this iconic dance researcher, mm -hmm. movement researcher. Mm -hmm. She, I think, was so curious about human beings, about humanity also. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I'll, I'll get into that in a second. But um, one, of, one of her, the main concepts that she really um, strived to, to understand, to consider was this idea of falling mm -hmm. and recovery. Yes. Yes. And, you know, she had this interesting theory called um, the arc between the two deaths. The arc between the, the two deaths. The arc between the two deaths, like a mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. a, a, a curve, a curve, a linear, yeah. curve, a linear kind of Pathway, situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, she saw she 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 looked back towards classical Greek antiquity, and she saw she saw a couple of different um, axes, and by that I mean um, poles of of maybe ideology, I'm not sure, um, the Apollonian um, idea of reason, mm -hmm. and the, the Dionysian, excuse me, sorry, Dionysian um, idea of um, uh, pleasure, sensuality, um, living life in an experiential sense. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and she, took, she, yeah, she saw those two poles, mm -hmm. right? And she saw each of them as um, the, the, the quest for reasoning and the quest for um, progress as kind of this verticality that in some ways had such, a, such stability to it in its ever um, striving that it could be seen as a little bit, um, oh, what's the word? Stagnant. Rigid? Yeah, it's rigid, stagnant, not, mm. not having um, motion. Mm -hmm. She also saw that um, this, this other axis could be seen in some ways as, you know, um, our, our friend Dionysus with, you know, the god of wine, the god of, um, of being quite, um, you know, drunk, <laughs> falling <laughs> over, uh, right. you know, um, but, but or also having, um, after we're, we're all gone from this world, um, the idea of a death as you lie in the ground, mm -hmm. as you'd have no more movement. You are, you are not living mm -hmm. anymore. So she saw those two axes as this, um, these kind of ends, these kind of, um, I don't want to say stagnant, but these, these places with not a lot of movement. And, but she saw that the area between Wait. them, right, was this place of incredible, um, exciting drama, um, wherein all of life happens. And so the arc between the two deaths became this, this place of research for her. And it, it kind of has within it naturally this sense of falling mm -hmm. towards one place, but rebounding, rebounding. Mm -hmm. again out of it. Mm -hmm. And very metaphorically, I think this is, this is what she felt about the human spirit. She mm -hmm. felt like we, we, we are not perfect. None of us is perfect. Um, in that in that way, the Apollonian way of, of trying to find truth and beauty and, and, and the righteousness in a perfect way. But we, we do strive towards it. We not, I, I don't know if naturally, but we have a tendency to have things go wrong. Mm -hmm. The life, you, life is life, right? Mm -hmm. um, things, things happen and we pick ourselves up and we try again. Mm -hmm. And so that was maybe the more, the larger picture for her. But then she, her research was quite in, in, well, how does that happen in the, in body? the body? And how do we, how do we put that, that study and that research into a physical practice? Mm -hmm. And her, her practicing was not necessarily codified as, as some of her, uh, of her generations was. Martha Graham's particularly was a little more in, in a codified kind of um, vein. But hers was about the, the ideas and the principles um, that were found in this landscape. And um, yeah, and so, so I think that her, that, that's, that's 
not everything, of right, course, right. That, that Doris was interested in. But that's a very, very essential and important part of what Jose was, le what Jose was learning um, at this young stage in his, his dance career and his artistry. Mm -hmm. and, and certainly, it, it, he you drew... You could see how it developed yes, through his absolutely. work. absolutely. Yes, and yes. so it was, it was found in, in the movement structures and the, um, the, the choreographic um, um, cre um, generation that he was doing as well. Mm -hmm. um, so, so yeah, so that's, that's kind of the uh, connection that he had to Doris. And she was his choreographic mentor for years mm. until she passed. But L Limon was also um, really just so enamored by the, the glory, the magic of the body. Right. And what the body, he, he always said that the body is an orchestra and it's this, it's this symphonic way that things, the hands work with the chest, works mm. with um, you know, the, the, the face, works with the legs, of course. And so um, that, was, that was something that he, he just saw everything. He saw gesture as incredibly powerful and meaningful. Mm -hmm. And his, his work was, not, not all of it was extremely narrative. Mm -hmm. Much of it was. Much of it was telling stories. Mm -hmm. um, some, of, some of it was quite abstract in nature. So I don't want to um, like limit what, what, he, what he created. Right, right. But, um, but so much of uh, the scope of his dances is really getting at humanity mm -hmm. and the, the power that exists within us within, with, with the good mm. and the foibles of, of being a human and the not so good. Yes. And I think he really, that's, to me, I think that's really such a, um, an amazing thing to be, to want to uncover the, the, the uglier truths right. of humanity and show that, and I think in a way, like Doris was, was attempting to do with this idea mm -hmm. that we, we need to acknowledge that we, we have so many things that uh, we need to work on. Yeah in order to be better. Yeah. Um, and that's, I think, what his work really was trying to say, that humanity is a, is a beautiful, beautiful, magical thing in this world, but, but it's not without its, its um, problems mm -hmm. and, and, the, the, and that they're in us. Yeah. yeah. So that, that brings me directly to the work that you're setting. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. All right. Um, tell us about this work yes. um, and how it advances yes. that, that, that very same research idea. So I am so um, grateful to be able to share uh, the work of Limon um, in Dances for Isadora. Mm -hmm. That's the title of the, the work. Dances for Isadora was made in 1971, um, very shortly before Jose's death in, in 1972. So. Um, in some ways, I, I do, I, I, I don't know, I was not alive to speak with him and ask him these questions, but I do wonder if um, there, there was this idea of legacy that was swirling around in his, his world and thinking about, you know, just time mm -hmm. and, and people's passing through time and how they touch one another in, in terms of um, af affecting and, um, uh, yeah, just, just really being important, critical moments of, of connection. Mm -hmm. So with Dances for Isadora, having a great time setting f um, a series of five solos mm -hmm. that, that do intertwine and connect, that express the, the um, progression of this one of the earliest icons of, of modern dance, mm -hmm. of this, this change or this, this evolution uh, in the early 20th century, Isadora Duncan. Iterations of her life. Also, I think Jose was, I mean, expressing um, certain aspects of a, of a woman's life. So I think that they were um, also trying to not be, ju yes, they were ju about this, this, this individual, but I think they also, um, you can see how uh, a related sense comes in from moment to moment as a person um, moves, through, moves through their existence. 
so so the the five solos they they move from um, a person being young and innocent and full of potential and life and just the excitement mm. right of being alive just just discovery and 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 all of the 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 wonders that come at a youthful stage of life and then it moves into a second solo that has um passion has physical passion has um love mm. um and 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 and, a, and a, an awaken an awakening of of sexuality that that is part of of people's experience mm -hmm. frankly um and uh is 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 very uh, driven in that way so very exciting um it moves then into a very somber um chapter of isadora's life and um very very sadly um she lost her two children very tragically in a an automobile accident paris um they drown in the seine um, and I think that that really was a, a, you know, such a, of course, for anyone, that would be a an extreme mm -hmm. life-altering experience. Mm -hmm. um, so that that chapter was, you know, choreographed, expressed. Um, it moves on to a fourth section that is really speaking to Isadora's. Um, sense of of her 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 power as an artist her her desire to make change in a good way mm -hmm. um uh in in ways um of, of feminism of of pushing forward um womankind pushing pushing that that half of our planet should be able to have an equitable experience and um and so how was that ex how was that expressed in her life but then how are we going to distill that into into this movement into this mm. solo um very powerful and then finally uh, a fifth solo is um this very um tender slash fragile slash um, reflective solo about her, the, the end of her life. And she was very young when she died. She was, um, perhaps she was around 50. They, they are not sure when exactly she was born. So mm -hmm. it's a little disputed, but um, you know, to, to only live to one's you know, 50, you know, fifth decade yeah. is, is just a, you know, such a tragedy. She, she um, had a tragic death of the, the, the beautiful flowing uh, clothing and garments that she, she enjoyed so much and that were of, of the time. And um, one of them um, tragically being caught in a car that she was riding. Um, and so she, um, yeah, she, she was strangled. Um, she was strangled in her, in her death. And um, so, it's it's just a, an amazing, amazingly full life. Whether that was positive in so many ways, tragic and 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 awful in mm. so many ways, um, but regardless of that, I think Jose felt like Isadora was a a, a real figure that 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 helped to kind of um, get the wheels turning or, pay, or pave this kind of way of thinking of uh, a, new, a new road of concert dance. Mm -hmm. And he, I think, realized that, you know, he maybe would not have been who he was or, or learned the things he learned were had not, not have been for her. So um, I think this was definitely the, the homage to what, what, what he might have considered her the, the grandmother of of modern dance, of yeah, modern dance, right, yeah. right, uh, and and perhaps of, of his own artist artist um, pathway as mm. well. Mm. Um, wow. So yeah, so that's that's <clears throat> been that's that's the piece, and the the students, the artists that I'm working with, they're fabulous. Yay. They're fabulous. <laughs> they are so dedicated, and they're yes. so uh, they really are committed to 
the the movement sensibility, the the um, uh, the dramatic intent, uh, the, you know, the intentions that are are being um, shared with them. They are just going for it. How many students are you working with? One cast or two? Two casts. Yes. Two casts. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So we'll and get to see two fabulous. separate casts over two weekends. Absolutely. That is fantastic. Absolutely. And, and, and they have, they really, um, you know, it's, it's a quick process right, right, right. now. And, and so we, we still have, a, we have time that we are going to be exploring. Um, and, but I can already see that, you know, it's just beautiful to see, um, like, for example, two very unique dancers doing the same steps. Same timing, same, 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 but different. You know, it's, yes. it's just a really beautiful yes. thing to see yes. their individualities come out. Yeah, or dancers are what, 18 to 21. Yeah. How are they handling the, the more mature yeah. stages or the, the more traumatic? Yeah, um, yeah absolutely. The, the loss of her children, that, that, that solo is phenomenally complex. Absolutely. And, and it's, it's so much more subtle. To, to, to get it across. I'm curious as to yeah. if they've gotten this far, how are they handling yes. that? And if not, what are some of the strategies yes. um, that you may have to help um, young dancers take on yeah. roles that are um, I love this more question. mature I than love their experience? Yeah. We're, we're in dialogue, frankly. I mean, it's, it's, it's like it's asking, you know, how might you feel? How, how can you empathize? with someone who has lost? Have you lost anything yourself? Has something been so dear to you that you can draw upon that? Um, and, then, and then it's, it's, it's just description, just using words to try to fill the imagination. Mm -hmm. And then how, and I, I am such a, um, a firm believer that, um, that somatically that, that our, our, our brains, our imagination, the way we use other forms of language have direct connection to mm -hmm. the, the way we physicalize, we use our energy. And, and so I think that that's at least m my attempt mm -hmm. at, at making this a rich experience for the performers and then also as a result, hopefully a rich experience for the audience members that are going along this storyline also. No, that's, yeah. no, thank you um, so very much. I'm excited. Mm -hmm. Yeah. for dancers here at UW-Madison yeah. Dance Department and for the experience yeah. that they're getting um, from you mm -hmm. and the professional coaching yeah. that they're getting through this experience to be able to bring this work to life. Um, for audience members who, new audience members who yeah. may not be familiar to, yeah. with concert dance yeah. um, and, and want to come and say, have this experience for the first time. Yeah. What is one thing that um, you would say to those folks and what's one thing that they could look forward to? What I would say is to just be able to take in with your senses what's going on and feel okay about what you think about it. You can like it, you don't have to like it, you can think it means something, or maybe it doesn't mean anything mm -hmm. to you. And I think that's fabulous. Um, but I don't think that people need to feel like there's a right thing about what you're seeing. When you see this dance, yes, it sometimes is nice to know a little bit of the context, a little mm -hmm. bit of the background, because it, it, it does help one feel like, like they have a door in, like mm -hmm. there, there's something, um, that they, they might, might be right about. Of course, I understand that. But I think in general, with any kind of dance, it's just experiencing it and letting it be what you want, what you think, what you want, what, what it is for you, and being, being okay with that. Mm. Thank you so much for this conversation. Mm. Thank you for being here. Of course. Thank you all so much for joining us. We hope we were able to create a little bit more of an entryway into modern dance.